Hi everyone, welcome to Business for Builders podcast. Welcome to you if you're in YouTube land. My name's Max, I'm the CEO of Smith & Sons uh, here in Canada. Uh, welcome to you wherever you are listening to this, whether you're, you're ducking down the road to the hardware or whether you're you know, heading home from work or going to work or uh, wherever you might be, uh, I trust it's going well for you. Uh, today, uh, obviously, we really appreciate your ear taking the time out to uh, have a listen. And of course, uh, as always, I want to make sure that I can bring something uh, that is going to represent some value. Uh, obviously, what we love to hear is stories of guys and gals that are, you know, have got a dream to build a business and then they, you know, you know, put the business together, they execute and they start developing that business that they, uh, they really got their heart set on building. Uh, for them and their family. Now, today I want to talk to humans about humans. Uh, I think you know, as as often as we talk about um, you know what content we're going to bring, and uh, you know, I guess at some point you might say, Max, you've already talked about that. Uh, my, I could be accused of maybe already sort of doing a little bit of that as well. Um, but I think you know, we always want to reinforce some of the fundamentals and principles around what we think it takes to build a successful building company. Um, but today, talking to humans, which is you guys and gals, and uh, about humans is something that, you know, this morning, it's Monday morning when we're recording this, and, uh, you know, it's something that uh, I guess is our biggest challenge. Uh, everywhere we look, uh, the, the, our business for what we do as general contractors, essentially, and I'm talking mostly to GCs, uh, our business relies on uh, other human beings to actually help us be successful. Uh, both sort of directly and indirectly. Obviously, uh, if you don't have clients, none of us will have anybody to work for. That's a problem. Uh, if you want to grow a big business, you're going to need to make sure that you've got people to come in and work for you uh, to share some of that load. Uh, and then, of course, you know, beyond that, you, you're going to need to work with maybe coaches and consultants, uh, obviously other people, extracurricular, but that you know really help support your business like accountants. Uh, and those sorts of people, bookkeepers, everything that in our business, everywhere I look, there's people everywhere. There's humans that play intricate or important roles uh, in our in the operation of our business. Now, um, heck, you might even have business partners, and of course, you've got spouses and spices and you know life partners and things like that. And then you've got legitimate business partners and people that have you know shareholdings in your your operation or whatever. Everywhere we look. Uh, you know, we are being affected. What I want to just focus on today is that, you know, I always talk about how that businesses are supported by systems and uh, good humans run the systems that run businesses. And, you know, I think, you know, just things that happen in, you know, my daily operation really do influence the way I think about it. Because usually more often than not, uh, after this podcast, there'll be, you know, fires I've still got to go back and fight. Um, but more often than not, there's there's stuff going pear shaped everywhere, and of course now the Smith and Sons business is developing across Canada, and you know we've we've got you know a handful of of great operators, and they all have different demands, they all have different personalities, uh, they all have different requirements, uh, they all have different challenges and things like that, and so you know as your business grows, and so for you, I mean I don't know what sort of business, maybe you're just a one man band at the moment, but you want to develop a business, and maybe. You know, you're a you're a guy or gal that's got you know half a dozen uh, full time workers, and you're doing twenty million a year, uh, but you want to go to fifty million a year. Whatever the case is, you know, for you to either maintain your position in the in the in the business, you you're going to need to have to handle humans. Uh, and of course, what is good in one human today in in a month's time might not be good. Uh, and I think I want to talk to to you guys and girls as as the leadership component of your business. Uh, and and uh, we, we really what kicked this conversation off was, was just a situation that we were chatting about. And I said, well, it's not all blue skies and lollipops. And I think um, the bigger the business, the more load a business owner has to carry, uh, the more vision that they have to uh, make clear to the team uh, and certainly, it almost like the more risks that we have to take to not only just maintain the business, but to grow the business. So, uh, you know, I, I think there's a lot of uh, behavior and, and patterns of behavior that I have had or I have learnt or caught that are either relevant to the growth of my business or that are actually detrimental uh, and that take away from the growth of my business. And, you know, I think, you know, somewhere to start might be ask yourself this question. 
is what you're doing in business right now life giving or life taking? Uh, I think we've got to be careful to to not think that our employees or our subcontractors owe us anything because the minute we do that, we give up the leverage. Uh, now, does that make it pain free? No, it does not. Uh, I I think there's instances just about every day where I've I've got to eat shit for at one end of the scale or another short term to ensure that I get the business development trajectory and results that I want in 12 months, two years and five years and beyond. Uh, so I think we've got to be very tactical. Uh, you know, it's one thing to play checkers, but it's another thing to play chess. Chess, you've got to be thinking three moves ahead uh, and, and definitely not being held to ransom, you know, by your team is super important, but I certainly don't subscribe to being a dictator either. So being a good quality leader, I think is a prerequisite even more, you know, you know, you've got a business opportunity, you know, that, hey, I'm in the building game, and I can build houses. And you might even be in a position where I've got great systems, because I've developed all of those by myself. And I've got a great sales system in writing, you know, my, my, my estimating and quoting process is great. My, my contractual documents are all drawn up by the lawyers. The problem is you'll be limited off the back of your ability to recruit, you know, great talent. And that's great in theory, but to recruit t- good talent is one thing, but to train and retain good talent, that's another challenge. Now, if you're one of these guys or gals that used to doing everything yourself and you're like, nobody does it better than I, uh, you know, that, that is a, that's limiting thinking as well uh, because you are going to constantly struggle with entrusting someone else with the uh, responsibility to carry out said scope of work or to operate the sales department within your business or whatever the case may be. Um, so this is this really, uh, I think this chapter in your business life is an inside job. It, it's, it basically is determined by the six inches between your ears and it certainly does uh, make it a challenge if you look in the mirror and go, there's nothing wrong with that guy uh, or girl. Uh, I think the biggest, you know, if something goes pear-shaped in the business, the first thing you want to do is look yourself in the mirror and go, what could I have done better? Now, it may have not been your fault directly. However, you employed that person, so it is your fault. The end. Makes it easy. Because now I own the situation as far as what went wrong, which means now I can sit back and come up with a resolution or a solution to that issue. Uh, so, you know, I think there's, you know, I think leadership in construction, leadership in, uh, you know, the business of construction is certainly, it's understated. Um, when we also know that if, you know, I think, uh, I used to say this as a, as a framing carp, and I would tell uh, this, this superintendent that I used to work for all the time, uh, because I thought I was a superhero. I said, Desi, I make you look good, bro. Don't you forget it. I wonder if you'll ever get to watch this podcast or watch this YouTube video. But, uh, you know, I would also always say that to him. And it was, you're such a cocky prick if you say that. Because ultimately, that building company was my client and I was completely disrespecting that person. Now, uh, the flip side is the superintendent handled it really well. And it was funny how I actually got a kick out of it. He gave me a little bit of free reign to you know, flap my gums and tell me, tell, allow me to tell him how good I was. But at the end of the day, I actually enjoyed working for that building company and for this superintendent. And so he would give up a little bit just to allow me to just pad my ego a little bit. And what, what he ended, we ended up working with, with, with those guys for several years. And I had, you know, at one point there, I had, uh, you know, I had three crews. I think I had fifteen guys all up. And so I was running a decent sized crew. And I do recall those days where it felt like I was getting hit from all angles. It was, it was only a very small percentage of guys that wouldn't give me any trouble. Uh, now, those guys were employed full time, um, but certainly, and as a, a framing carpenter, you know, we we're doing some finishing carpentry and obviously some exterior. Uh, you know, I wasn't working directly for clients and therefore I didn't have subcontractors working for me. Um, but the minute that I went out and started running a building operation, it was, it, I had this epiphany. I'm like, ah, I rely. It became very obvious to me that, ah, my subcontractors are actually guys and girls that help me deliver the finished product. So it became very evident that I had to be a very good leader of humans. Uh, and so, you know, like Desi did to me, he cut me a bit of slack and put up with my bullshit, but I always did a good job and he let me shoot my mouth off a little bit and we seemed to sort of, you know, coexist pretty well. 
Um, so, you know, I think as builders, if we don't uh, constantly take stock of what's happening uh, and have a high level of empathy, we can go from being this, you know, builder full of bravado and all of this confidence, and you can quickly move through the honeymoon phase where he's happy that he's got a job with you, you're happy that you've got a carpenter now, you know, swinging the framing gun or whatever, uh, and he's going to handle some of the on, on-site stuff. And then over a period of weeks and months, something starts to deteriorate. And you've heard me talk before about self-awareness. And I tell you what, your head's on a swivel. I mean, you've got to be listening and thinking and feeling and understanding and comprehending. And really, as a leader in your business, you're, you're like me. You, I'm here. I, I am here to serve everybody. Is, is this person okay? Are you okay? Have you had a good weekend? What's the problem? What can I do more to, to make your job easier? What, what tools do you need? All of this sort of stuff. I'm always asking. You know, they'll say, hey, Max, we need this. And I'll be like, send me a link. And I'll go to Amazon and see if it's, you know, see if it's worth buying or whatever. But what I'm trying to do is remove the friction within my business without being taken advantage of. And I know that's not that easy. Uh, and it is a little bit of a fine, you know, balance. And more often than not, <clears throat> you're not going to get it straight down the middle. Uh, it's always going to be a little bit left or a little bit right. Now, I want to make sure that uh, everybody in this office is happy as, as much as they can be. Now, nobody's perfect. Um, I'm certainly not perfect. But I do work hard on ta- maintaining, it's what we start talking about, is culture, maintaining a good culture. Uh, anybody in this office that has a toxic culture that's not a, is a cultural misfit doesn't last very long. Uh, and, you know, this, some of this conversation is definitely, you know, that I'm having with you today, some of this conversation has come out of a very recent set of circumstances. So, um, you know, I'm not, we're definitely not immune. And here's the thing, right? You know, you can attach a lot of ego to say, well, I'm a really good recruiter and I get it right all the time. I reckon I only get it right. I reckon 60 to 70% of the time max. And, you know, I wouldn't be, I'm not game enough to go any, any more beyond that. Um, you can have a really good run and that goes down to, both employees and understand that I'm the I'm the recruiter. I'm the guy that talks to franchise perspectives, and I'm sort of thinking, well, you seem like a good guy, and, and they like the idea of the Smith and Sons business, and I get them on board. There's no guarantee that three months, six months, nine months, twelve months, or two years that they're going to be an exact match. However, what I do to you know, I either make it a decision um, and run with it, and and we slowly work things out or it doesn't work out and we've got ways and means to sort of, you know, obviously negotiate certain situations with, with our operators. But the thing is too, what I help them understand, and this is where uh, what you have to apply, whether it's employees, whether it's subcontractors, uh, or in my case, whether it's franchisees, is to apply a high level of empathy. Now, um, I'm not saying getting walked over. I think you can be, you can be uh, an assassin business owner, you know, I think you're going to be an absolute ninja and be a really good human being all at the same time. I don't think they're, you know, mutually exclusive. I think that um, you you have the ability, depending on what setting you are, to, to flex. Uh, you know, obviously, I get cranky with, you know, vendors and suppliers uh, on behalf of my franchised operators. Some of the service that we've got recently has been very disappointing. Uh, and, and when it comes to negotiating with those guys, the gloves are off. Uh, I want service and I, I want I want good delivery. Um, but when it comes to, you know, humans that are a part of our ecosystem, and of course, if you've got subs, you're relying them uh, relying on them to come back if they've served you well. You want to keep those guys and girls working. Um, and certainly if you've got full-time staff then that are good, you don't want to lose those either. Your competitors will poach good people from you in, in a moment's notice. So you really want to have your finger on the pulse. You know, I, I think we can get a little bit blasé as business owners and just assume that our guys are super happy. And if I was to ask you, well, when was the last time you had a, you had a sit down? And, and whether that's a six month or a 12 month or, a, you know, an 18 month, uh, you know, performance review. I mean, where, at what point do you actually just get a one-on-one with your employees? And it's like, okay, tell me what you're, what you're, what you're happy for uh, or happy with. Tell me, tell me what do you need more of and all that sort of thing. And have a real heart to heart and get to know your employees. If you are very... Uh, if you if you're very much um, just scraping over the top of it, you won't even see it coming, and it will be a blindside. Well, I thought I was doing everything right, and they've just given me two weeks' notice. Uh, and if they give you two weeks' notice, don't offer them more money because that's a weak, amateurish bullshit move. Just cop it in the chin, realize that you've cocked up, and go and find somebody else. The end. 
There's nothing else you can do about that. So, you know, I think we've got to empathize a lot. We've got to show, I think there's a degree of humility that's got to kick in as well. Um, you know, we, we do hang, we, are, we have a very healthy ego, us guys. I can't really talk about the girls, uh, but us guys definitely have got healthy egos. Uh, I don't know about you, when I was an apprentice, it was always about who could knock this wall up the fastest or who could do this frame the fastest and all this sort of horse shit, which absolutely means nothing today. Um, but that's, you know, what that bred into us is that competitive nature and that ability to try and produce a result the fastest. And we could hang our hat on that as something credible. Uh, you know, but I think that 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 ego side of us needs to, you know, be in check. And I think you've got to have a balance between ego and humility. I, I don't think ego is bad. I just think you need to make sure that you temper it with some humility at the same time. And so, you know, I think once you feel that you, you know, it's, it's, I would say it's constantly or it's regularly, it regularly recurs as pain. There's no question. Um, you give somebody something, an opportunity, you know, you give them what they want. And then all of a sudden they don't serve you in the capacity that you'd hope for. Um, and then you have to let them go. And, and that, that hurts because you've just invested all of that and you've got to try and recover from that. But I think what you can't do is you can't sort of, you know, really beat yourself up on that. You actually have to make sure that your the business that you are building is systemized and that you are keeping or, you know, retaining and training good talent. Uh, because if you if you are constantly doing hills and valleys where, okay, it's spring and summer and you get busy and then you recruit a bunch of people and then it comes into fall and you're getting close to sliding into Christmas and all of a sudden you've got to let guys and gals go – then what you're doing is it's this hills and valleys. You're just going around the mountain. You're not actually solving any of the problems. Now, you could blame, you could blame clients. You could blame the type of leads that are coming in. You could blame the actual employees or the workers themselves. Or you could maybe stand still and go, the common denominator is me. You know, What am I doing that, that needs to change? Now, what you don't know, you don't know. So this is where either a coach and consultant or someone like Smith & Sons can really help uh, put the finger on some of the areas that are maybe letting you down and hindering hindering you from building a high performance business. So you know this is where again self awareness. So look, it's not all blue skies and lollipops. People say they want to run a big business. Ultimately, you're going to need people in that business to run that business to operate the systems that you've designed to make sure that the bu the business side of it is 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 kept under control. Uh, but then you complain about the people in your business that you've recruited. Um, you know, I definitely subscribe to hiring quickly and firing quickly. Some people say hire slow, fire quickly, all that, whatever you do. Um, but on the day that I hire you, I guess on the day that I fire you, I know you, whether you're a fit or not. And so the quicker I can do that, um, the better it is. So, you know, it is ego, it is humility. Some people will not fire people because, you know, it's too hard to do. And I get that. Um, but I think, you know, it helps you in your strategic thinking. What, what didn't I see in that character and why did I let him into the business and did I give him too much rope and that's why it took me six months to get rid of him or her? Uh, look, there's a whole bunch of things and I think, you know, a lot of the time, you know, you've got to bounce it off somebody and particularly somebody in the trade. Uh, you know, I often have my guys, matter of fact, one of, one of the guys in the business today when he first joined, he talked to me about a guy that he had on the tools and I said, mate, he is not reliable. He's washed up and old. You just got to let him go and find a young buck who can perform at a high level. The end, like done. And when he did that, it was so, you could just see that he was so, uh, you know, and there were certain steps that he went in his recruitment or his ability to recruit where he started breaking through ceilings and starting to understand how to go about attracting good talent and how to, uh, you know, retain good talent. And of course today, you know, he's, he's got a, he's got a, you know, he's got a swag full or a uh, you know a bag full of really you know good people that love work in there and uh, really do put out some good work. So look, I think that's about all. That's enough uh, for one day. Uh, remember, it's not all blue skies and lollipops. Uh, it is possible. Probably the bottleneck to your business development is you. Uh, you need to get educated. The more you earn, uh, will be subject to how much you learn. So if uh, recruitment is your Achilles heel, then you've got to go and learn some about how to develop yourself as a business leader and understand how it is possible uh, to lead. He who uh, can serve the, the, the best will lead the most. I'll say it again. He who can serve the best or learn to serve the best uh, will lead the most. So uh, let me leave you with that thought. If you like what you heard, uh, like, share, subscribe. Uh, if you want to hit me up on email, max at businessforbuilders.ca. Uh, you can even uh, shoot a text off to us at 250 241 
double eight double six. And uh, look, we will get back to you as soon as we can. Um, it'll be fairly prompt. But uh, as I always say, go to build a kick-ass business. I'll see you on the next episode.